we've now been joined by Kyle Bush, driver of the number 18 Pedigree Toyota. We will open up for questions for Kyle. If you have one, please raise your name, state your name and affiliation. Who would like to kick us off? <clears throat> All right, good talk. Let's go. <laughs> All right, who would like to kick us off? Thank you, Chris Knight. Yeah, Chris Mike, HedgeFence.com. Kyle, sorry, this is a truck question, but I was just kind of curious about Rafael Lassard and what you, if you were impressed with his speed yesterday that in practice being the fastest truck here. Um, yeah, I didn't get a, a real good sense of how practice went from any of my guys or anything like that. So overall, just saw that he was top of the sheets first practice. And then, um, you know, that's always kind of difficult to tell sometimes how that exactly happens. I think they made a mock run at the end of first practice, so I think that's what put them up there. But, um, you know, it's, it's it's all about uh, the lap tracker and consecutive laps and consistency and things like that. So uh, he and I talked a little bit this week about coming here and being prepared for it. So it was nice to um, kind of help him out, get him up to speed a little bit. Nice to see that, um, you know, they, they had speed at least, and hopefully he can do a good job. I mean, it's the biggest track he's ever seen or been on and fastest he's ever gone. So. It'll be a, a big learning experience for him this weekend. All right, Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Uh, in practice that you just finished, uh, 23 cars went faster than the track record. Do you actually feel that increase in speed when you're going around there? Yeah, there's no question you feel that you're going really fast. Um, it's, it's really fast. Um, probably, uh, I don't know. It's probably too fast. But, um, you know, the faster we tend to go in the middle of the corners doesn't always produce the best racing. So we'll see how that translates. Um, it's going to be big numbers for qualifying, obviously, but we'll see how that translates to the race. I'm not overly excited about it. So, um, you know, we'll just have to fight through it and see what happens. All right. Additional questions? Tyler and then Claire. Can we get a microphone to Tyler, please, up here? Oh, okay. Back in the back. Go ahead. Go. Zach Sterniolo, a little poker to record. Kyle, um, judging by that first practice and, and how fast you guys were going, uh, what, what, are, what are your expectations for qualifying? I know you said you're expecting huge numbers there, but um, especially with the single car format, does that change anything, how you approach it? I missed the last part. What? With single car qualifying, uh, in effect, does that, a does that change your approach to it at all? Um, well, I guess it's a good thing I had my media availability because I wouldn't be coming in here after qualifying, judging by how fast our car goes. So, um, you know, obviously we've not where we want to be. We're a little bit slower than we want to be. Um, it'd be nicer to be closer to the front. Um, but speeds are just really, really fast, so we're not quite there. All right, Tyler, go ahead. Uh, Tyler Rent Motor Racing Network. Looking ahead to uh, next week, how would you describe some of the challenges racing at the mile and a half at Kansas? And then my second question is, the following week, um, the M Memorial Day weekend. What's it mean to you to race on Memorial Day weekend? And also, um, how do you feel about, um, obviously, the military and everything that happens at Charlotte that weekend? Um, yeah, going to Kansas next week, it's um, a little farther ahead on my radar than I've been. Um, but it's, um, uh, it's a night race, so it's cool to be able to go race Saturday night. And then we um, you know, have Sunday off, obviously. But the challenge to Kansas, I guess, is just going to be what it takes with this new package and uh, the faster speed. Well, you're not really faster at Kansas, I guess. you got the 550 package there. So, um, you know, seeing what that's going to be, is it going to be wide open? Um, you know, is the draft going to be in effect? Uh, where's the groove going to be? Typically, it's been uh, momentum around the high side the last couple of times there because that's where the banking's the best or the highest. And um, so that's, that's kind of what you look at first, I guess, going to Kansas next week. And then um, obviously, we have the all-star race in between then having Memorial Day weekend, but uh, Memorial Day weekend in Charlotte's a big weekend. Uh, it's huge for our sport and for NASCAR and for what the red, white, and blue means to all of us. And, um, you know, obviously being able to help support and honor our military uh, for Memorial Day weekend, it's a lot of fun to be able to do that. Um, it's nice that um, the NASCAR initiative has grown over the years with NASCAR salutes and, and the military program of having a um, – you know, a person's name um, on our cars, on our windshields, and we get to honor that family uh, if they come, choose to come to the racetrack for that weekend. So the last couple of years is we've had our family there um, that has been of the fallen soldier on our on our windshield, and 
and we've been able to honor them. And fortunately, last year, finally, I was able to get that first win and be able to go to Victory Lane. They were there with us in Victory Lane. So it's cool to be able to do that. It's an unfortunate situation that only one guy gets to win. Um, but there's there's an opportunity to celebrate um, 40 unique lives that, uh, that paid the ultimate sacrifice. All right, Tim, go ahead. Um, Kyle, one thing I wanted to ask you is exactly how much off-throttle time do you guys have? I know it's very narrow, so as a driver, you just came out of there. How much off-throttle time really is there? Yeah, for the qualifying laps here, you weren't all the way out of the gas. Um, you just kind of roll out to about, I don't know, 20% throttle for probably 200 feet, and then you're starting to feed it back gas uh, as quickly as you can, as much as you can, in order to be able to get the run off the corner and down the straightaway. So um, lots of on-throttle time. And, um, you know, again, just you're not you're never all the way out of it. All right, Claire, go ahead. Then Dan. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Two things. First of all, happy birthday. How was your birthday? Did you have a good one? It was good. Yeah, thank you. And second of all, you said the speed's probably too fast. What is too fast? Like, where, where would you draw the line at Dover? What is too fast? You, you pretty much know as a driver what too fast is. If you have a problem here now with the speeds we're carrying through the corners it's gonna hurt it's really gonna hurt um so i mean the faster you go the harder you're gonna hit the wall there's no question there is so um you know i just i don't know i mean when you're the indycar guys around here they were flying around here you know and they don't come here anymore because it was too fast it was dangerous for them right so um eventually there comes a point where it can be too fast for a stock car as well um and whether that is or not i guess that's for people other than myself to think um, but I'd I'd much rather um, you know appreciate racing and, and being able to race um, at a more tolerable speed than than what we're going right now are we approaching the danger zone here no question all right Dan Dan Gelson the Associated Press uh, Kyle what's the significance to you uh, becoming the first driver in almost 30 years to have top tens in the first 10 races uh, it's good. It's cool. Um, you know, it's obviously what's kind of on our mind right now with um, being able to go in every week. Obviously, we want to win. Uh, that's what we strive to do each and every time we're on the racetrack. But, um, you know, we thought it'd come to an end last week at Talladega, and it was close. We were right on the right on the verge, man. But um, we made it through another one. So um, we had the opportunity here this weekend to go to the Monster Mile and, um, and try to come out of here with another top 10 finish. But, um, you know, last week we had Talladega that was working against us. And um no disrespect to my sponsor pedigree um they're fantastic people and fun to work with but um, i don't think i've finished in a pedigree race car the last five times i've driven one so um hopefully we can finish and if we can hopefully we can finish in the top 10 so that's what we're shooting for this weekend all right kyle we appreciate your time today we'll be fantastic. rooting for that pedigree car on sunday and uh best of luck this weekend